Is, is 2018 going to be better than 2017? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, listen, 2017 was a tough year yeah. uh, where we, uh, we, had, we saw tough macros. Um, but during that year, actually, we made uh, two transformational moves. We sold our RB food business for a good price, and then we acquired Meet Johnson early last year. And as a result of which, basically, 50% of our business now comes from higher growth, higher margin healthcare categories. Um, as I look forward to 2018, I think it's going to be a better year for RB, and that's how we are guiding the market today. Is that, we're, is that, is that what I should call it, rather than Racket Bank, is or I should call it RB? RB is a better name uh, now because uh, a lot of people find it difficult to say Racket Bank. I remember the merger. I, I remember covering it with, with a great deal of diligence back in the day. You talk about the, the acquisitions you made last year. There's another big business out there that potentially could be on a shopping list, and that's Pfizer's consumer health business. It's got a, it's got a pretty punchy price tag, a, a bit like some of the price tags that you paid last year. I, can you give us any guidance on your thoughts on that business? Would it fit well? Would it be something you'd be interested in? Is the price too high? Is is it too close to the last M&A deal? Yeah. Well, listen, you know, first of all, I'd like to say that RB has a very disciplined approach to M&A. Uh, disciplined because, you know, we apply our criteria very, uh, very diligently. Uh, one of the first ones is, is it strategically compelling? Uh, does it make sense strategically? The second one is, are we sure we can be better owners of the asset? And the third one, obviously, is does it create value for shareholders? Now, obviously, we made a number of deals, including the ones that I talked about last year. But equally, we walked away from a large number of deals, too. Uh, you know, some of you might remember, we walked away uh, from Merck a few years ago, publicly, very publicly, because it didn't fit the third criteria. So I cannot prejudge any other deal that comes into the market and where RB will be with these deals. We cannot comment on those. But what I can definitely confirm is that we will apply these three criteria that we have very diligently to anything we see. Just to kind of, as an aside on that, the cost of capital is going up. How does that affect valuations, do you think? Well, the cost of capital is, is uh, where it is, actually. Uh, and, you know, we, we use our weighted average cost of capital um, that we see uh, as a combination of, uh, you know, of our equity uh, and, and debt. Um, I think we have to clear that cost of capital in anything we do in a reasonably uh, short period of time. And, you know, we, again... I'm not going to disclose what that period looked like, but we have not just a disciplined approach, but I have to say a fantastic track record of making our deals work from a value point of view. Every deal we've done, every major deal we've done actually, has created good value for shareholders in a defined period of time. Let's talk about the share price. You, you sat down in that chair and you looked over to the other side of the studio and you said, yeah, you should run that share price graph over a slightly longer period of time because it, I think it better reflects what the business has done. So let's bring it up. This is the ANR uh, for RB. Um, and let me just say that the, the yellow line there is, is the price uh, and the, uh, the white line up here is, is kind of the price target. Now, for a long time, those two were pretty well correlated. They are not quite so well correlated, but as we already indicated, as we started the conversation, 2017 wasn't a great year. Where do you want that number to be, the, the white line number to be? <laughs> Listen, you know, I don't come to work thinking about where that line should be. I come to work thinking about how I'm going to outperform the market. You have a reputation for being quite close to the share price. You know where the share price is. Maybe not on a tick-by-tick -tick basis, but you know where it is. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I know that if you look at the share price over the last five, six years, you know, every thousand pounds that you invested in January 2012 would have been worth 2,400 today, which is materially higher than what you would have earned in the FTSE 100, you know. Uh, so the company has done extraordinarily well over the last six years. I know we've had a tough uh, last 12 months from a share price point of view. But really, I'm absolutely uh, serious. I do not think about share price on a daily basis or a monthly basis. I think about our business and how to serve consumers better, how to actually serve customers better, how to drive better innovations. And if I can do those things well, I know, you know, my performance is going to be fantastic. And if the performance is fantastic, the rest takes care of itself. Can I ask you a slightly kind of left field question? Paul Pullman over at Unilever is taking a much stricter approach when it comes to social media and his company spend on the big social media companies. I, what is your view on how advertising is spent, distributed, the relationship you have with some of these companies? I, do you think it's going to change in 2018? 
Well, I think, first of all, we have to be alive to the fact that consumers are on social media, and therefore brands have to engage with consumers on social media. But we also know that everything available on social media to advertise, if you want, ha is not as transparent as we would like it to be. So we have taken the same hardline approach to this kind of uh, you know, opaqueness in the market as you refer to from another company. Uh, Having said that, our approach actually to social media has been very deliberate. I mean, if I point a, a, a number to you, which would be quite staggering compared to any other company, now 50% of our business in China comes from online sales. 50, one half of our business. And it doesn't happen that you transfer 50% of our business from offline sales to online sales without use of good social media. So we are experienced in this. We know the benefits of doing this. Equally, the challenges and uh, of of the opaqueness, and sometimes I said, you know, the lack of transparency that exists, and we want to, of course, get better at that, and we are taking it up with the media agencies and the media houses to make sure that we can do it better.